All right, so I just spent a lot of money here in uh, Sound Garden. You will see what I picked up. But this, they have some fantastic stuff here, and I was really surprised by some of the titles I saw because I never see them. Uh, never see them in Chicago. And so this was a really great store to come to Sound Garden, check it out sometime. Richard here at Calvin Wazoo, the channel where we often have an illegal smile. And as you saw from the opening sequence, I did some record shopping at a store in Baltimore, Sound and Garden. Um, and it was like really incredible store, especially if you saw when I was flipping through the bin and those records showed up, which I'll be talking about in a little bit. So this is going to be kind of a long video because I have a lot of records. I mean, I dropped a pretty penny in that store. And I am going to start off with a record that I did not buy at this store uh, because uh, it was from earlier and I just haven't, you know, gotten around to include it. And I finally am, and this and that is this reissue 
of Betty Davis. Okay, Crashing from Passion. Uh, this is a 2023 remaster reissue on clear red vinyl. And the original was a CD from 1996. Now, on the Gunkles, we reviewed Nasty Gal, which has also been uh, reissued and remastered. And all our records are. So the OGs are difficult to find and they are often um, very expensive. So it's really nice that we're getting these reissues and and um, also the fact that uh, they're being remastered. Uh, Betty Davis was Miles Davis's second wife. And the record was originally recorded in 1979. Now, but there were some unofficial releases that came out in 1995. So this, uh, I believe, is the first official release, you know, here in 2023. What I find really interesting about this record, I think Nasty Gal that we reviewed on the Gunkles is a better album, but you know, this is a good album as well. Um, but what I wonder is, did she influence Scissor Sister? Because a lot of, uh, there's some similarity in musical styles and also in the way Jake Shears uh, delivers uh, some of the, you know, his vocals, etc. So uh, while listening to this, I really kind of wondered, you know, was she an influence on Scissor Sister? Uh, she died in uh, 2022, uh, age 77 from cancer. Um, the needle drop I have for you is the song, I need a whole lot of love. That's a damn good groove with that uh, particular song. Um, now we can go into the records that I picked up at this store in Baltimore. And um, the Sound Garden, as I was saying, uh, they gave me uh, the bag here. Uh, it's in the Fells Point area of Baltimore, which is right by the harbor. And going through, they had just really amazing collection of uh, just lots of different uh, material. But this one um, I picked up, this is Tangerine Dream Ricochet. This is probably a 1975 pressing when it was, uh, when it was released, but a later pressing, it's the uh, the uh, green and red label. It is a live performance and it is the seventh edition to my collection of Tangerine Dream. And it is also their seventh release. Um, so yeah, Tangerine Dream, we've got Edgar Frese, Chris Frank, and Peter Bauman. And this is part of a string of what I think are really stellar albums that they uh, began releasing, uh, starting with Phaedra in 1974. Phaedra, I do not have. I, I need to get it. But uh, I'll play a brief uh, needle drop from this composition. Uh, Ricochet is, is a single piece on two sides.
very, very influential. This was uh, Tangerine Dream was my introduction uh, into electronic music. And I've uh, been a, you know, major fan. I should probably look into picking up some records by Edgar Fraser, but uh, I'm not sure where to start with those. Um, all right, the next one that I found in this store is uh, this, it's, it's a 12 inch single and it's Aphex Twin. And it is March ROM T38, edit 2B96. <laughs> well, you know, I find it confusing at times when I pick up records that do not clearly say whether they're 45 RPM or 33 RPM. So, you know, sometimes I have to drop a little card in with the record to, to keep that straight. This one is even more aggravating because side A is 45 RPM, side B is 33 RPM. So, uh, well, anyway, you know, Aphex Twin is Richard David James from Limerick, Ireland, and the, the title song, March Rom T30A, edit to B 96, is on side A, and that's the 45 RPM song. I like side B a little bit better, and that's the 33 RPM song. And the needle drop I'm gonna play for you is Xmas Eve T1N. The recording itself, I think, is a little more polished. The uh, 45 RPM song, the recording sounds a little little rough, not too refined. The music is pretty good, but I do like Side B much better with that particular Aphex Twin. And then this one I saw in there, and it is on Warp Records, so I took a chance on that because, as I've said in other videos, just about everything, well, everything I picked up on Warp Records, I have really, really liked. And this one, I thought, okay, this is called The Black Dog Productions. And the title of the record is Bites. So when I saw The Black Dog Productions, it made me think of the uh, project The Black Dog, which I have a, a copy of. And this, and it is, what I found out is that this is a compilation of material from the various project that members of the Black Dog were involved with. So the members of the Black Dog were Ken Downey, Ed Handley, and Andy Turner. So we've got tracks on here by Plaid, Close Up, uh, excuse me, Close Up Over, Zepper, Echo Mike, Atypic, IAO, Discordian Popes, and Balil. Um, so a lot of variety here, very, really good uh, material, um, electronic kind of dance techno music. Um, there are these series uh, that are, they're mentioned on the record label, but they're not mentioned on the jacket itself. And they're called like Echo Mike 1, Echo Mike 2. So there's Echo Mike 1 through 7, which introduce uh, several of the songs, seven of the songs that are on here. It's a double record set, which are these brief intros. Most of them are less than a minute. A couple are longer than a minute. Uh, and so they kind of introduce some of these other tracks on here. The needle drop I'm going to play for you is called Focus Mel, and it is by the project Atypic.
excellent stuff. I mean, this is, I just, again, Warp Records is a solid label to go with if you like electronica, dance, and techno music. Um, it is really, really good material. Now, speaking of some very cool dance house kind of music that is taken from remixing jazz favorites, um, I had this on, on a CD that a friend burned for me, and then I finally, uh, you know, saw this in the store. I mean, they had, they, I think they had all four of these releases, and that is the Verve Remix, and this is Verve Remix 3. Um, it's a triple LP set, or I should say, well, triple 12-inch set, and um, it is part of a series that was released from 2002 to 2008. Uh, then they released another compilation called The First Ladies Comp, and that was released in 2013. Many of these were CD only. And as I said, they go from number one to four, and the store had all four of them. But, you know, they're 40 bucks a piece, which is actually a pretty decent price for them. And, uh, you know, with all the stuff that I was finding in this store, it was amazing that I got out of there for, I mean, I still spent a lot, but I, it was kind of amazing that I got out of there without going completely crazy. Um, but the needle drop I have for you from this is a Sarah Vaughn cover of Peter Gunn, and it is the Max Sedgley remix. Just some, forgive me for being an old man using already outdated terms, but this is dope. <laughs> this is really, really good stuff. And um, just amazing to see it uh, on vinyl and, and, and sound as good as it did. Now, when I was going to the cashier and I was getting ready to you know pay, I did ask uh, because this was my only chance in the store. All right. And they did have a lot of titles, you know, in industrial and in electronic music area. And that's kind of what I was zeroing in on. So I asked them, OK, here are the records that I'm going to buy. Do you have anything else that you might want to recommend? And they uh, one of the people there who was working showed me this. You know, and I thought, okay, um, I'll I'll give this a try. This is uh, Pig, the Swimming, Red and Sore. It's a compilation that was released in 1999 on CD, and then it was uh, remastered and reissued in 2023 on this two LP set on uh, this in a kind of a red marble limited edition. It's classified as industrial. But to me, it's more of a heavy disco house music vibe. Um, so of the four sides, side two has a very much darker, more sinister vibe and includes this 12 minute uh, song called Symphony for the Devil. Um, Blades is a really solid tune on side two. But overall, the, the sound was... It was like too familiar to me. And as a result, it was, uh, I felt like it was kind of reductive uh, in, in what um, he was doing. There was a lot of, um, I don't know, um, a midnight oil kind of delivery to it, but then also kind of, 
you know, pulling from um, uh, Nine Inch Nails and Trent Reznor, and, you know, and this is, this was re released in 1999, you know, and, and Pretty Hate Machine was 1989, um, as was, um, Midnight Oils, uh, well, no, that was earlier than 1989. That was 1982. I'm thinking of uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But, you know, I'm getting that kind of a vibe sometimes with the vocals anyway. Um, but anyway, the, the needle drop I'm play for you is from the Pig remix of The Fountain of Miracles. <laughs> This is a really sick remix. It was, um, and one of the better things, and this is probably worth owning just for that and maybe also for the tune Blades. But as I say, the rest of the album um, felt a bit reductive to me. Now, on this next one, when I saw it in the bin, I'm like, I recently saw somebody else talk about this and show it, and I can't remember if it was Tommy from Tommy, Tommy's Vinyl Lot, or if it might have even been Steve Carlson. You know, I, I can't remember. Uh, but this is Fetus, and this is actually the iteration of Fetus called You've Got Fetus on Your Breath. So the original of this was from 1982. This is a 2022 remaster uh, on white vinyl. And what a great cover. I mean, really just fantastic cover here. So Fetus in these various iterations is this Australian by the name of James George Thurwell. He immigrated to London in 1978. And that's where he began to um, conceive of the this concept that became you know known as fetus uh, it's industrial punk to me uh this particular recording but the his styles on his other releases are very widely in in terms of the the musical style and genre that it may be close close more closely associated with um his singing in in some respects uh, very similar to Snake Finger. Um, so each of the fetus releases are identified by a different moniker. So you've got, for example, this one is You've Got Fetus on Your Breath, which were the first two releases uh, that uh, came out. Then this was followed by two releases that were under the moniker Scraping Fetus Off the Wheel. Okay, and then that was followed by fetus interruptus, and then came fetus corruptus, etc., etc. So the these uh, titles, this series, so to speak, goes from 1981 to 2013. Um, the needle drop I'm going to play for you is "Dying with My Boots On." <laughs>
That's the opening track, and that's pretty much how the entire album sounds. It's, uh, yeah, very much like I say to me, I would categorize it as industrial punk, uh, this particular one. Uh, and all the album covers are just really fantastic. Um, you know, even if you might not like this particular style of music, it just might be worth getting the records because of the album covers. They're just all that cool. Now comes the best part of, of being in that store. As you saw from the video clip that uh, as I was just summing through the bins, I came across something that I never thought I would see, especially as soon as, as I did see this because recently I did a video where I picked up a, a reissue remaster of Psychic TV. And then I kept, you know, I saw this, all right? This is, uh, this is live at the circus. And there were a bunch of these uh, OGs, all right, of Psychic TV. And they must have just bought a collection and because there were quite a few and I ended up I ended up buying um three and stopping there because I knew I was gonna want to buy other items you know uh I was tempted to buy every one that was in there because there were you know I'm sure they were really good because the ones I got uh are really good so Psychic TV uh came out of the di uh, dissolution of the, the band or project known as Throbbing Gristle. This was in 1981. A founder was, uh, or the primary founder, was uh, a person, uh, a trans person, Genesis Porridge. So they were the primary founder, and Porridge is P hyphen Oridge. <laughs> so um, now Peter Christofferson briefly was a member in the early days of Psychic TV, but then went on to uh, form Coil. Now, and also Psychic TV were early adopters of Chicago Acid House, right around uh, 1988. They hold the Guinness Book of World Records record for the most records released in one year, and that year was 1986. Uh, probably because of a lot of these live albums that they were releasing. Uh, and yeah, with this first one, Live at the Circus, this is from 1988, and uh, there's a very cool label on here. And Live at the Circus was a performance, well actually it's a blending of two performances from the Super Tent in Finsbury Park in London from 1987, and then at the Astoria in London in 1988. It is the 12th in a series of 23 live albums. So these are very unpolished live albums or soundboard recordings, I'm sure, that just were not uh, overproduced or anything. It, they're raw, very much like a bootleg. And in fact, that's what they were doing. They were not necessarily uh, usurping bootleggers in the way Frank Zappa, when he released Beat the Boots, um, that was done sort of as a retaliatory action against all the bootlegs of those particular recordings that were going out there. So, you know, he just released Beat the Boots so that he could get the money uh, from that. This is more like a, um, a, a sentiment uh, maybe, pro maybe practiced by the Grateful Dead in that Psychic TV knew people were recording their shows and there were bootlegs going out there. So they did this not so much to, you know, kind of block them from what they were doing, but as an homage to them. And so there was this series of 23 live albums that are all very, very raw recordings. Um, and as I said, I believe uh, this is the 12th one in this series. 
it's got uh, of the three records I got this is probably you know the lowest ranked one there's some very good songs on here but there seems to be some really abrupt editing that goes on and uh, also my copy has a kickback on the uh, first song on side a um which visually I cannot see it so I'm I'm wondering if there's just a little bit of something in the groove that I need to get removed uh because it definitely is a is a kickback um but anyway the album to me though is worth getting just for the side B song which is the entirety of side B and that is uh, Voodoo Acid and that's the needle drop I am playing for you. Great, great stuff. Very, as you can hear, it's very raw and industrial. And, you know, a lot of their material is this combination of an of industrial and and acid house and and rock and just a lot of blending of other, you know, avant garde, even spoken word uh, type of uh, compositions. The next one that I have that I took out of that group that was in the store. Uh, this is a really, really good one. This is very solid. And it's, rather than being titled Psychic TV, it's Psychic uh, Television. And as you can see, this is a, it was $20, but this is an OG uh, copy. So even with these OGs, they're, they're not that badly priced. Uh, sounds really, really good. And uh, a real Swedish live show. Uh, this is the, the 16th in this series of 23 live albums. And it's droney, it's melodic, and also very tribal, particularly with the drums. Uh, the needle drop I'll play for you is from side two. And the uh, title piece is uh, The Atmospheric Eye. <laughs> So a little bit, you know, different, as I say, with the kind of drony and, and tribal rhythms that go in there. And then the third item that I picked up from Psychic TV is uh, this one, live in Göttingen, or Göttingen, I should say. Uh, this is the seventh release in the series. It's from 1987. Um Live at the Circus was 1988. A Real Swedish Live show was from 1989. And then uh, Live in Göttingen was uh, 1987. So seventh in the series. This is really good. I mean, I just really like this one. Um, and 
side one is the lie and side two is the truth. There's really no, to me, they're, they're largely a continuation of each other. Uh, and there's nothing in one to indicate, you know, that it goes with, with the title. So, uh, but regardless, this is just a fantastic record. And so uh, the needle drop I have for you is from the side that has the lie. Just, you know, th this is this is music I like, okay? And I know it's not necessarily for everybody, but yeah, I am. I just am really enthralled and amazed by this. This is, you know, it's not music that I'm going to listen to once and then shell the record and probably not listen again or you know not for another couple of years no this is this is music i will listen to with some frequency because it's just really um i can't quite explain the experience i have while listening to it but um it is music that you can immerse yourself into and just let it carry you away so that's what I found um, at the uh, Sound Garden in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, hey, hit the like button and leave a comment in the down under if you so desire. I do love getting the comments. Appreciate that. I appreciate you hitting the like button because it, it does help with distribution of my videos. But, you know, hey, you can subscribe if you want to. And... Remember that I am also on Instagram as NewsDude76. That's N-E-W-Z-D-U-D-E-7-6. I also have a Facebook page that is called Calvin Wazoo. So you can follow that where I not only post my videos that I have here on YouTube, but I post other videos that I find in other music-related content. So there you go. And remember, please to pray for the people inside your head, for they won't be there when you're dead.